morning everybody and welcome to another important workshop in the series of workshops as our efforts for empowering teachers of professional institutions all across the country. I am Deepak Fatter. I run this project for train a thousand teacher uh, uh, under the national mission for education using ICT. Today's proceedings are we will have a brief inaugural session for half an hour. Uh, for this session, we have with us uh, Professor Tembe, who heads our Center for Distance Engineering Education Program, and Professor Kannan Malgalya, who coordinates all the NMICT projects, uh, NMEICT projects in IIT. Uh, we also, of course, have Professor Sahana Murthy, who is the coordinator for this workshop, and with whom at least the workshop coordinators have interacted in the past. And we also have Professor Uday Gayatonde. He and Professor Kandan will actually be taking a session uh, in the morning half today. The rest of the workshop schedule will unfold. In fact, Professor Sahana Murthy, in her session, will be giving some details of things to follow. I believe that the schedule has been circulated to all coordinators and uh, we hope that the coordinators have got either printed copies or have read out the schedule to participants. So without further ado, let me welcome uh, the guests of honor for this brief function, uh, Professor Tembe and Professor Kannan Mautgalya. Professor Tembe, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kandan. Let me also use this opportunity to welcome with a bouquet of flowers uh, our uh, esteemed guest faculty, Professor Uday Gaitonde. Many of you would have seen him in several of these. I do this, of course, on behalf of Professor Sahana Murthy, who is the workshop coordinator. Where is he? Okay. Uh, so I'm I'm glad to offer this bouquet of flowers to another colleague of ours who is going to teach in this workshop, Professor Sunoj, but I have to do it in absentia because he he is expected to come for his session sometime later. So with this, what we thought in this short inaugural function, we would like to tell all the colleague teachers who have assembled for this workshop, including the PhD and ME students whom as a special case we are permitted to attend this workshop. Indeed, I am glad to tell everyone that there were more than 3,500 participants who had enrolled. But because of the lack of facilities and infrastructure at the remote centers, we were constrained to confirm the registration for about 2,000 participants. Uh, what is the latest number? Is it 2,000 or 2,000 teachers and of course, large number of schools. Uh, somebody in fact jokingly mentioned that we should put it in the Guinness Book of World Records. But we will do that when we reach 10,000 teachers in a workshop sometime during this year. However, we are very glad to observe that in terms of the attendance and participation, this is probably the largest attended workshop uh, in our series. With this, I will now request uh, Professor Tembe to give his brief inaugural address. Professor Tembe. Thank you, Professor Fatter. <coughs> Good morning and a very warm welcome to all of you. It is my pleasure to be with you today on this occasion, on this inaugural session on effective conference paper writing. It is indeed reassuring that 2000 teachers and several more participants have joined in this workshop. This only re-emphasizes the great importance of this subject. We all like to hear good conference paper 
we all like to write good conference papers, but there are hardly any training programs to empower us with this. In fact, I have been writing conference papers for almost 30 years, still I feel I am not perfect in this. So, this is a very, this is a subject where it grows with you and the older you are the better you become. <coughs> My special compliments to the organizers in IIT Bombay for having thought of organizing this workshop. IIT Bombay has been involved in distance education programs for almost 20 years now. It began with 4 or 5 teachers with a educational technology cell and now it has grown into a full fledged center for distance education engineering programs. And nearly 70 centers participate in our programs and we are able to convey our courses live as well as asynchronously. And you may all have heard about this national program for technology enhanced learning, where with the association of several IITs and other institutions, we have created a repository of 1000 courses, video as well as web, so that this can reach out to all the needy students. Even IIT Bombay, we have our own recorded courses, almost 200 in number, and it is, it will be made available to all users at a very nominal cost. I think human needs are really increasing now. The demand for food, the demand for land, the demand for water and I think the next demand is education. Just we can construct 100 or 150 storied buildings, we have to reach out to a large number of people simultaneously. So, distance mode offers a wonderful opportunity to connect with all the people. And for doing this, we have got extremely generous support from MHRD, NME ICT, individual donors. <coughs> And now, the national knowledge network has given us the bandwidth, so that we can reach to different parts of the country. We have also started a new interdisciplinary program in educational technology. Uh, this is about 2 years old, about 25 faculty members from IIT Bombay are participating in this and we have also people in other institutions, which are co-guides for some of these programs. About 13 students have already joined in this program. And with the help of all these faculty and students, we hope to take educational technology to a much higher level, so that we can reach out to different people effectively and in a way they can really communicate with the teachers as well as their peer groups. My colleagues here, Professor Fatak, Professor Maudgalya, Professor Gaithonde and Professor Sahana Murthy have played a very crucial role in setting up these centers. <coughs> and taking distance education as well as educational technology to new levels. It is indeed wonderful that they have chosen this timely topic. We produce lakhs and lakhs of students, but we have hardly any emphasis on effective writing skills. Our competitive exams, there is no, comp there is no section for communication skills, so they can get their masters, bachelors, all degrees. And we have seen PhD students even at the end of their program with some 30 presentations are still not able to communicate effectively, because this communication skills you cannot learn in one or two days. So, I hope that this will form an initial nucleus for you to get started and with time, not only you can improve and perfect these skills, but also impart these skills to your students. <coughs> and Lot of emphasis today is on mobile uses and laptops and I think these are in a way an impediment to communication skills. So, I hope <coughs> that you will have a very good workshop these next two days and use this opportunity. <coughs> and another advantage this will provide you is that you are in contact with 2000 or 3000 students. So, you can form very good associations in this workshop, so that when you write a next paper you can flash it off to 4 or 5 people so that they can communicate to you how you have done and you can communicate to them how you have improved, so that this will all be an extremely enriching uh, experience for you. Uh, I thank the organizers again for giving me this opportunity to talk to you and my best wishes to you for an enriching workshop. Thank you. Thank you very much Professor Tembe for those uh, encouraging words as also words of wisdom. I would like all participants to remember one very critical thing that he mentioned, ability to write and ability to communicate cannot be developed in one or two days. It is a constant continuous effort for a very long term. So, indeed I would 
like to endorse what he said that this two day workshop should only be treated as a beginning foundation on which all of you would have to construct fairly large and stable buildings over coming years. I will now request Professor Kannan Mahdgalya, as I said, he is the coordinator of all MHRD projects undertaken at IIT Bombay and there are several. Uh, I would like to request him to share his thoughts. Good morning to everyone. Thank you, Professor Fatak. Um, I will uh, briefly summarize the NME ICT's activities. Um, the main uh, objective, the main objective of this mission is to raise the levels of education in the country. Uh, NME ICT stands for National Mission on Education through ICT. So, it is based on the belief that technology can be used to raise the levels that we have a lot of problem, quality has to be enhanced and there is no better tool than technology. So, this NME ICT is based on that assumption. There are three components in this uh, mission. One is uh, to provide bandwidth at a very low cost. Uh, as a matter of fact, every university is given 1 Gbps connectivity through this mission at almost 1 percent of the cost. The second one is the connecting device. Uh, we know about uh, Akash. Uh, it was launched in October. Uh, we expect the second edition of this Akash to roll out soon. The expectations and the um, expectations of use and um, the excitement that one can actually get a computer of that type, a full blown computer for about 2200 rupees without any subsidy has. Uh, uh, made the demands uh, much bigger than what we expected. So, as a result, um, uh, there is a big team that has been formed to look at the second edition of Akash and we believe that it is going to be an exciting uh, opportunity for everybody. Content generation is the third one, bandwidth, connection device, the third one is the content generation. Now, content generation is the uh, head, heading under which a lot of funding has happened for uh, institutions and uh, individuals. Um, IIT Bombay uh, is a recipient of some of these funds and we are actually grateful to MHRD for um, putting its trust um, on IIT Bombay to do this. Uh, one of the requirements of uh, the content generation in this program is to release all of these as open source and also to use open source software in all the projects. Um, NPTEL is a flagship of this uh, mission that Professor Tembe already mentioned. I will briefly mention some of the other programs that have been funded through this mission. The first program, uh, first project is called the talk to a teacher project. It has various components. The most important component is the 1000 teacher uh, training program. I am um, happy to know that this uh, title itself will become uh, uh, incorrect, because in this uh, course itself, we have 2000 plus participants and there is an aim to go towards 10,000 uh, to train 10,000 people during the summer and MHRD is now actually talking about training lakhs of people through this mechanism. So, I am glad to say that uh, this 1000 teacher training program is doing extremely well. Uh, in fact, I would like to congratulate uh, Professor Fatak and his uh, team members and of course, the faculty members of IIT who participated, who delivered lectures and who made this a success. One of the things that we also hope to do in the future when we go to 10,000 or uh, 
uh, lacks of uh, you know people empowerment, teacher empowerment is that we will also get experts not only from IIT Bombay, IIT system, NITs, but also go to NITs and also go to all the universities, get the experts and ask them to deliver. And as a matter of fact, we need to have several of these programs running in parallel and um, it is uh, it's going to be an exciting opportunity, exciting experiment and uh, the bandwidth that has been made possible through this uh, mission is going to be handy. The software A view through which you are receiving this transmission which is also supported by this mission is also going to be a very important tool um, for enabling this activity. Uh, Professor Tembe mentioned uh, live course creation, recording of courses uh, at IIT Bombay and then offering them and then uh, so those will be available, at least some of those will be available for uh, uh, free uh, download and of course download costs could be high. So, you may need to uh, take it through some media, so there could be some cost in that. Uh, spoken tutorials is uh, one of the uh, important uh, components of this. Um, I plan to spend about uh, 5 minutes during the next session. Uh, in particular, I would talk about LaTeX uh, spoken tutorials, because LaTeX seems to be a, a very important software for writing papers. Researcher scope is another component of talk to a teacher uh, project, where the research scholars uh, who are close to graduation come and give a 45 minute talk uh, at a level uh, that uh, many people can understand. Ask a question is uh, an important component, important supplement that is required for any asynchronous uh, mode of uh, education that it is possible for, uh, for uh, a live session where students uh, can ask questions and uh, experts assemble in one place uh, answer them. As of now, the electrical engineering uh, department at IIT Bombay has been doing it. They are close to uh, completing about 50 such sessions, weekly sessions and we plan to extend this. Um, for this purpose also, we would need experts from all over the country to come forward. I will briefly mention the other projects happening at IIT Bombay through this uh, mission open source uh, software, in fact it is called FOSI, uh, free and open source software uh, in science and engineering education and uh, it focuses on two software packages, um, Scilab and Python, uh, exceedingly useful for all colleges and these are excellent, uh, in fact state of the art and most reliable uh, tools for uh, their uh, uh, comparable commercial software. And uh, as a matter of fact, Scilab is used by uh, CNES, which is the equivalent of uh, our ISRO to launch Ariane rockets. Uh, we, uh, you all know that uh, Ariane rockets launched several of our satellites in orbit and uh, they use Scilab for uh, trajectory calculation, orbital calculation and so on and so forth. It is an amazing software, uh, so is Python. Python in addition to being used for scientific and uh, technical calculations, numerical calculations can also be used at um, uh, almost as an equivalent to C, including for example, writing device drivers and communicating with devices and all kinds of nice things. Um, we have a project that looks at uh, an open source equivalent to the popular LabVIEW software for um, data acquisition and control and um, NG SPICE and TCAD combination for uh, simulating uh, ICs, uh, printed circuit boards and so on and so forth. Robotics is uh, another uh, important project uh, uh, carried out by my colleague Professor Kavi Arya from uh, computer science department and the objective is to create low cost. Uh, robotic uh, devices. Virtual labs is a very important addition in this mission. Uh, at the end of, at the 
end of first phase of NPTEL, the government realized that that creation of courses through all experts in the country is a, um, is a doable uh, mechanism because in the first phase of NPTEL only five undergraduate um, programs are covered, but after the success the government uh, figured out that it is possible to extend this to all other subjects also postgraduate courses, elective courses and the other undergraduate uh, programs not covered in the uh, first phase, but it was also felt that courses alone would be would be insufficient uh, unless they were accompanied by some kind of laboratories and this uh, virtual labs uh, led by IIT Delhi. In fact, uh, Professor Ranjan Bose is the main coordinator of this uh, program. Um, it is doing an amazing thing. A matter of fact, on 23rd, our uh, honorable um, uh, HRM, uh, Mr. Kapil Sibal is going to launch that program on 23rd from 3 to 4 PM. We have uh, Oscar, um, which is led by uh, Professor Sridhar Iyer and Professor Sahana Murthy. And um, this uh, project looks at development of animation for as an effective way of teaching uh, technical matter. Uh, for example, they are working with many of the courses I mentioned earlier, course instructors to create suitable animations. Um, they are using this open source software package called uh, Blender. It is an amazing software and uh, once again uh, it is in line with the objectives of this mission. Um, there is another very important uh, project that is uh, um, done through this mission. This is done by Professor Ravi Puvaya of uh, Industrial Design Center. Um, this is on creating design courses. Um, in fact, the number of uh, colleges that offer such design programs in India is uh, very small. In fact, it is probably about 10 percent or, or less than that of the number of uh, uh, programs that uh, China has. For example, um, as a result to address that, this uh, program has been uh, started. The website for this is dsource, source dot in s o u r c e and you just put a, the letter d before that source dot in. Um, uh, it has uh, amazing uh, courses that uh, IDC uh, is creating. Of course, they are partnering, partnering with IIT Gauhati and uh, the National Institute of Design NID Ahmedabad. Um, so, I gave in a nutshell uh, the kind of uh, programs that are being supported by this. Um, uh, I, I think uh, maybe I am uh, already exceeded my time. So, I will not uh, take any more time. Um, the website for the, the mission projects is sakshat s a k s h a t sakshat dot a c dot in all details uh, all, uh, all details pertaining to this mission are available at this website. So, with this I will uh, uh, I want to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. I want to uh, wish you the best of luck. Um, and of course, I will come back uh, in about one hour time. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Kannan. Uh, before winding up this brief session, I would like to request the video team uh, to focus on other colleagues who have helped in uh, uh, conduct of these workshops. So, uh, we have for example, Dr. Mukta Atre and I have Mahendra Parmar and uh, Jaya. These are the people with whom many of the coordinators would have interacted both for administrative and financial things. And on this side, I have the video team, which uh, sort of takes care of all the audio visual uh, two way communication between us and the remote centers. Uh, needless to add, I must also thank the people at the coordinating centers, but for their help both the center coordinators as well as workshop coordinators and the able team which they have put together to help us conduct these workshops, it would not have been possible to be effective. We also have a number of people attending this workshop sort of live from, from IIT Bombay itself. Many of them 
our PhD students, as Professor Tembe said, PhD students from our uh, educational technology program. Uh, sorry, and and of course some QIP scholars who are teachers like you who are participating, but uh, who are fortunate enough to have come to IIT Bombay itself to physically spend uh, <coughs> maybe three years uh, to work towards their PhD. So with these observations, I'll thank everyone for participating in this brief session. We will have an exact uh, three minute or four minute body break. We start the session sharp at 10. Thank you so much. I will request all the coordinators to uh, sort of finalize any minor adjustments they have to get enrollments, etc. done. With this, we will now have the three minute break and we'll reassemble and restart exactly at the end of three minutes. Thank you so much. Over and out.